afternoon, students. You are welcome to Federal Government Girls College Wari Lesson Series. Today, I will be taking you on mathematics. And before us is angle of elevation and depression as our topic. So you may ask, what objectives do we have to achieve by the end of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand what vertical surfaces are, what horizontal surfaces are, and then you must be able to distinguish between vertical and horizontal surfaces. Secondly, you must be able to determine or identify angle of elevation and angle of depression. And lastly, we will be looking into some calculation using trigonometry on how to solve questions as related to length and height on this topic. So let's get to the topic properly. As you can see on the board, you have the definition for what a horizontal surface is. The horizontal surface is parallel, that surface or line that is parallel to the earth. It is simply a line that moves either from left to right or across a surface. Yes, here are some examples of horizontal surfaces or lines. The first example here is horizontal number line. As you are aware, this is a number line. So a number line on, in this format or in this direction is parallel to the Earth's surface. We, it is an example of a horizontal surface. The second example on horizontal surface is the classroom floor. Yes, the floor of your classroom is horizontal. We also have our tabletops. The tabletops is also a horizontal surface. Then when you place a ruler on the table, as you can see in example 4, it is also a very good example of a horizontal surface. So, it is that surface that is parallel to the earth's surface in itself. Another type of line we'll be looking at or surface is the vertical surface. As you can see, a vertical surface or line is perpendicular to a horizontal surface. Yes, when we say perpendicular, it meets the horizontal surface at angle 90 degrees. Now look at some examples of a vertical surface or line. We have a vertical number line, like the type you have on your graph, when you are doing your graph. This is a vertical number line, the one you have represented on your y axis. Another very good example of a vertical surface is the walls of the classroom. The walls are from up to down. It meets the floor of your classroom at angle 90 degrees. Then the legs attached to your table. All of these are good examples of vertical surfaces. All right. Now that we understand what vertical and horizontal surfaces are, it will really aid us in understanding the main topic, which is angle of elevation. From the word elevation, elevation means to raise, to lift up. Hmm? So when we talk about angle of elevation, the diagram on the board will help us to understand what it really means. Now, this fine girl here, I call her Emanuela. Emanuela, this is a original line of sight, or we call it horizontal line. If I stand the way I'm standing and I'm looking straight, this is a initial way of looking. But then, she decided to look up at this top of this tree right here. So, the angle that is formed in between this horizontal line which is our initial way of looking, and the, our line of sight as at when she raised her head to look up at the top of this tree, that angle formed, I call it theta, that angle is what is called the angle of elevation. So this line, we call it line of sight, 
while this is the horizontal line. And this is the object that she viewed. And at the end of the day, she formed an angle which is referred to as the angle of elevation. So by way of definition, the angle of elevation is the angle formed between the line of sight and above the horizontal line. As you can see, this is a line of sight and this is the horizontal line. We have so many examples of how an angle of elevation is formed and this is what happens on a daily basis. For instance, if an airplane is, is passing and I choose to look up to see it, the angle formed is what is called the angle of elevation. Or perhaps I'm standing up in an upstairs and I decide to look up and see a higher object. The angle formed the moment I raise my head to look at that object is what is called the angle of elevation. Now, let's move to the opposite, which is the angle of depression. From the English word depression, it means low or to lower. Let's use that word. So when we say an angle of depression is formed, this other diagram here will help us to understand what it means. This is the same Emanuela, a very fine looking girl. At this point, the object she's looking at is not above her, but rather it is below her. So this is our initial way of looking. Let me use that word. The horizontal line form if she chooses to look straight at an object. But the moment she decides to shift her focus and look below her, the angle that is formed between this horizontal line and a line of sight. In this case, she decides to look at this goat, this beautiful goat that is disturbing her environment. The angle formed here is what is called the angle of depression. So by way of definition, an angle of depression is the angle formed between the line of sight and below the horizontal. So this is a line of sight and this is the horizontal. So the angle formed in between is what is called the angle of depression. So before an angle of depression is formed, you must be viewing an object that is lower compared to where you're standing. We have some examples here. For instance, if I'm standing on a cliff, yes, a cliff is that rock that is usually very close to uh, a sea or or water or whatever very close to a river bed it is always elevated so if somebody stands on it and decides to look at an object that is below that cliff the angle form is the angle of depression the second example is when you look at a cat on the ground if there is a cat standing right in front of me and i choose to look at that cat the moment i shift my focus from my normal way of view and decide to look at that cat, the angle formed between my horizontal and the line of sight is what is called the angle of depression. So let's look at the relationship between the angle of elevation and depression. As you can see here, we have a cat on a tree. So the point at which this cat descends to look at Emanuela here. The angle formed between the horizontal and the line of sight of this cat is the angle of depression. While the angle at which Emanuela chooses to look up at this cat on the tree is the angle of elevation. So since the two angles are taking place in the same horizontal line, this line is parallel to this line. Therefore, we can say that the angle of depression is equal to the angle of elevation because they are alternate angles. And that is what we have here. That is the relationship between the two. The angle of elevation is equal to the angle of depression. Now, if you want to measure the angle of elevation and, depres and depression, we use an instrument known as a clinometer. A clinometer is used to do that. So we will be looking at some examples of calculation of length and heights under 
this very topic of angles of elevation and depression, giving a particular angle of elevation or depression. So we'll be looking at the trigonometry method. Now, before we go deep into the examples, we need to understand the basic concepts of using trigonometry. In trigonometry, we consider a right angle triangle. The side, which is always the longest side, facing the right angle is what is called the hypotenuse. The other side that is facing a particular given angle is what is called the opposite. Of course, it depends on where this angle is. If the angle is here, definitely this side will become the opposite. While the other side that is not facing anywhere is known as the adjacent side. We have three ratios that we use in trigonometry. We call it the sum, ka, soa. The sum stands for the sine ratio. So we call it sine. The same thing as your opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine, which is called cos, is your adjacent over the hypotenuse. And lastly, the tan, which is the opposite over adjacent. So depending on the side that is required of us, that will determine which of these um, trigonometric, uh, trigonometric ratios we will be using. So we'll be looking at some examples now. This is our first example. The angle of elevation from the top of a tree from a point 5 meter from the base of a tree is 45 degrees. Find the height of the tree. So as you can see, this diagram represents the question. This is the tree in question. The angle of elevation from this point to the top of this tree is 45 degrees. And the distance of that point to the base of this tree is 5 meters. So the next question is, which of the trigonometry ratio are we expected to use? Our unknown, we are asked to find the height of the tree. So this height, let's call it H, is our unknown. We need the height of this tree. So from our trig ratio, we can see that this is opposite over adjacent. So meaning we are using the tangent. So we have tan 45, 45 degrees to be equal to H divided by 5. So from here, to find our unknown H, we can cross multiply. That will become 5 times tan 45. Now, how do you get the value for your tan 45? Please use your four-figure table. And you also have it behind your new general mathematics textbook. You go to where we have tangent of angles. Then you will see in degrees. Look for 45 under 0. The value you have there is 1. So tan 45 is 1. Therefore, the required height of this tree is 5 meters. Example 2 is on angle of depression. A cliff on the bank of a river is 300 meter high. If the angle of depression from a point on the side of the river is 60 degrees, find the width of the river. So the first thing we are going to do is to represent this question in a diagram. In the first example, it was represented for you. But in the second example, we are going to represent it together. So a cliff, like I explained earlier, is like a rock close to a river bank. So let us assume this is the cliff. Now we are told that this cliff on a river is 300 meter high. So the height is 300 meters. If the angle of depression from a point on the side of this river is 60 degrees. So let us represent the angle of depression. This is our horizontal. So the angle of depression is this, 60 degrees. And this becomes the river. So the question asks us, 
find the width of the river. So this becomes our unknown. We want to know the width of the river from the base of this cliff. Now, remember earlier, we talked about the relationship between your angle of elevation and the angle of depression. That if they occur in the same horizontal, of course, this is parallel to this line. Automatically, if this is 60 degrees, 60 degrees is also here because they are alternate angles. So now that we have the side facing the angle, then the next thing is to find our unknown. Of course, the only trig ratio we can use here is tan because this is opposite over adjacent. So it becomes tan 60 degrees is equal to 300 over our unknown, which is the width of the river that we are required to find. So from here, we can cross multiply, it becomes x times 60 degrees equals to 300. Then our unknown becomes the subject of the formula. So that becomes 360 divided by 10, 60 degrees. So as we did earlier, you will still check your four figure table to find the value of tan 60 degrees. Checking other tan tangents of angles. Checking other tangents of angles. So, I would like to bring it up here. We have x equals to 300 divided by tan 60 degrees. So, looking at the four figure table, the value of tan 60 degrees is 1.5. 732. So when we divide that by 300, it gives us 173 meter. So therefore, we can conclude then that the width of the river, the width of the river, is 173 meters. All right, students, as a way of recap, let's try to recall what we have been taught today. We talked about horizontal and vertical lines. Of course, horizontal line is that line that is parallel to the edge surface, while the vertical line is that that is perpendicular to a horizontal surface. Then we also talked about the angle of elevation and depression. The angle that is formed when your line of sight is upward is the angle of elevation. Why that that is formed when your line of sight is downward? It's what is called angle of depression. So at this point, I would like it to give you some questions for you to practice in order to assess your understanding of the topic. So I'll be writing that on the board right away. The angle of elevation of the top of a tower <coughs> from a point forty two meters away from the base. On level ground is 36 degrees. Find the height of the tower. All right, so let me read the question to your hearing. The angle of elevation of the top of the tower from a point is 42 meters away from the base on the level ground is 36 degrees. Find the height of the tower. So thank you students. It's been a nice time being with you. Looking forward to seeing you in our next series.